Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Prep Life Podcast. This is your founder and CEO of Glam Girl Bikini, Amy Inger, today here with my fabulous co-host, Lee Marie Hostetter. Hello, everyone. Hey. Okay, so I was sounding like the the last two episodes, I'm sure our listeners have noticed, and I really apologize because cringe audio drives me nuts. <laughs> so I yeah. kind of sounded like the Charlie Brown teacher. I don't know if you ever watched Peanuts, the <laughs> where she's like, wah, 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 yeah. wah, wah. <laughs> so hopefully we have solved the problem. Um, let us know in the comments on YouTube if you're watching. And um, thank you, those of you that left reviews. I was so like, grateful for all of the kind words. There were so many reviews and I'm sorry we ran out of tank tops. I have seen new ones come in and I apologize. I sent out a whole bunch of tank tops to different like states and um, I'm even going to send one to Canada, <laughs> um, to countries. Um, but yeah, we ran out. So thank you though, those of you that did. And I'm sorry if, you know, I didn't have one for you once you, you left a rating and review. But today we are going to be talking about 15 tips on how to stay motivated. And I'm wearing my Olympia fashion show uh, sports bra because this week is our Super Bowl, the Olympia um, this weekend. I can't wait for that. And Lee Marie and I have some travels to Omaha um, on Olympia weekend this coming weekend. And I was just in San Jose. So it's competition season. Things are cooking. You're in heavy prep. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? Just like a little check-in for you. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Fantastic. I am so excited to be coaching this weekend, coaching my athlete. And I know just being at the show is going to be motivating so much more. And then watching the Olympia at the same time, it's so fun leading up into my own competition season. And I just love when our sport is in full swing. Yeah. So much yeah. And we, we planned this team show a long time ago. And I think, um, the Tatonis, Jack Tatoni did not realize that it was going to be on the Olympia weekend just because he yeah. is so organized with his schedules. His contest schedules come out usually like in November, um, the year before, which is early for most promoters because they usually wait till NBC nationals in December. And yeah, it just happened that the Olympia keeps creeping backwards um, I think eventually it's going to get back to the September um, date, but, you know, because of COVID, it, everything got messed up. It was like December and then November, and now this year it's in October. So who knows? But we might have to do a part one, part two on this. We'll see if we get through all 15 tips. But these um, these tips come from Precision Nutrition, which I think is like the gold standard when it comes to sports nutrition coaching. So these are some ways that you can stay motivated. And um, I just think it's really prevalent in our sport to, you know, it's, it's hard not to have like your self-worth be tied to an item. So for example, the scale and what you weigh kind of dictating what you're doing and how motivated you are and how much you want to stick with a plan or, um, you know, a trophy or a placement and having that like fixation of that's what's keeping you motivated. When mm -hmm. I think an epiphany moment that I had this last prep was just being obsessed with the process versus the result and focusing on your daily tasks and all of that. So, um, our first tip is praise behaviors, not results. And so I just think that it's really tempting to like, you know, get really excited. Like, oh, I dropped weight this week and I'm doing really good. And like kind of managing your, um, like your self-worth almost in those different things. And, um, it's just, it's so much more, um, healthy for your mentality to praise those behaviors that, you know, because those are things you can control, you know, mm -hmm. the outcome, you never know who's going to show up at a show. Um, the scale can be fickle when it comes to like different variables, but also if it's bodybuilding, if you're building muscle, the scale might go up. So mm -hmm. it's just keeping in mind that you're kind of like planting the seeds to like reap the reward later, but just kind of like ticking the boxes, making sure you're doing 
the things that are eventually going to get you to the goal and kind of um, going that way. So Mm -hmm. that was kind Mm -hmm. of a long winded tip. Any thoughts to add? I love this tip. I think it's really important as a coach, but also as an athlete to have what I love about our check-ins, our weekly check-ins is they are all focused on the behaviors. And so in the very top of the check-in, we always give, you know, weights, measurements and pictures, but that is to judge if the system and the behaviors are working. Mm -hmm. So I think if we are chasing results, often as an athlete, I struggle with this sometimes myself is I'm going to kind of try to manipulate the system that my coach has put in place to try and get better or faster results when that's actually not helping my coach coach me as an athlete. And so if I can find the success or my wins in exactly following the behaviors set out for me or my prep plan, that gives the results puts it in the hand of my coach and they can manipulate my program as they see fit to, to get me to those results. So I think it's really important as an athlete in our sport to put our wins in checking off those boxes in following the prep in those behaviors every single week, just to give consistency so that our coach can handle the results and can twist the program to the results. So just from a practical aspect, really, really good. So the next point is to change the system and not the symptom. So we often think that changing the behavior is about motivation or willpower. But more often, their point is that it's simply about changing the environment. So sometimes I always think, try and make the hard things as easy as possible. Set yourself up for success. And that can, you might have to get kind of creative. For me, it's really easy. If I am hard in a prep, I don't have anything that I can't eat in my house. Now I live by myself. So that's really, (laughs) but I know like you can put things into place, like closing the kitchen off at a certain time, taking your cup of tea and leaving and just not going back or just putting things into place that don't tempt your willpower. They just change your environment. Yeah. Yeah. And like social gatherings with your friends, like you shouldn't be a prepzilla and an isolating person that like is a hermit during prep, Mm -hmm. you know, you should go out, but maybe you go for a walk in the park or you go out for a coffee um, instead of going to like a bar or a restaurant, or maybe you go dancing or watch a comedy show or something active like bowling or top golf or something like that. But just kind of, um, you know, changing like, like we were talking about the environment of what you're surrounding yourself in and setting yourself up to not have to be tempted. Um, and you know, if that means that you have, like you said, stuff stocked in your house, even if you are a mom like me, where you live with two teenagers that eat a bunch of junk food and crap, and like your husband eats a lot more food than you do. Those things are in my house, but as long as my things are in my house, then I'm going to stay on track because I'm not going to get overly hungry. I'm going to have my meals prepped and you need to have those things handy so that you don't have to make that decision like, oh, am I going to just grab this thing because I'm starving and not take the time to cook this home cooked meal? Um, So those are some things like and take the time to like portion things out on Sunday if you're busy during the week with work and you don't have time to like measure and and things like that. So Mm -hmm. that was tip number two. Uh, Tip number three is address stress levels first. So um, I think it's one of those things that a lot of people use as an excuse. And I mean, let's just face it, that's that can be, you know, stress is a real thing. And it does cause this, you know, like your progress to definitely come to a halt. Um, But we need to make sure that we're like, you know, not allowing ourselves to get into that point where we're not managing our time correctly. And, um, you know, everyone's busy, everyone has the same 24 hours. But like, if you take the time to be diligent about like planning out your day and making sure that you're putting in like enough time for a good amount of sleep and recovery items and ways to like kind of pour into yourself. I think that, um, you know, 
anytime you're stressed, it's going to push you away from your goal. And it's going to cause you to kind of like block yourself from moving forward, whether it's physiological or psychological, both are real things. Stress with your body, physiologically, it's going to be harder to lose weight with the cortisol. Um, it, but it's also when you're feeling that overwhelm and that stress, then you start to like also kind of get in your head and play those head games. So it's important for you to just make sure that you're implementing techniques and allowing time for yourself. Like if you're a person like me, where sometimes I just need my like alone time, like, you know, just if, I, especially if I'm like kind of having to be, I'm an extra extroverted introvert in a way, like sometimes I just get drained and it kind of like sucks me. And I just have to take some moments where I have like quiet time to myself. Um, like me time, I guess. You would say. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that makes sense, but totally. Totally. I think think stress can totally blind us and push us into panic mode. But if we can focus on finding solutions and organizing our time and not just fall back on stress, there's always something you can do to find time. I love that. So tip number four, I think we're on is um, how to support people through setbacks or for yourself. Um, if you're experiencing setbacks, separate the person from the problem. So separate yourself from the setback instead of taking the setback on as your identity. Like I always blow a prep at some point, or I, I can't, I'm just addicted to sugar or I just, I hate cardio. I just hate it. So sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't, or, or those things and reframe that into like, I actually love to say the opposite things. I'll, I just think of myself as the person that like, I love to prep. Yes, it's hard. And that doesn't mean it's not hard, but I can do hard things. And so can you, like you can do it and you like, you choose to do this prep because you love the sport or because it's a bucket list item for you, anything like that. But you can do hard things and you can be the person that you want to be. Um, I always say just act like the person that you want to be. Do do the things that that person would do. And you, you actually are that person because yeah. your actions like your results will follow actions, but who you are is what you do. And so if you are, you know, if you do love sugar, start eating healthy and you are the person that eats healthy. You are the healthy person. Yeah. Because that's what you do. Yeah. There's, I forget what the book was that I read, but there was research done on, and it's kind of like the, the opposite instead of saying like, you know, you are, I am X, Y, Z label in a negative context, you're saying it in a positive context. So instead of saying, I'm really trying to give up smoking, that's not really like giving yourself an identity. But if you say, I'm a non-smoker, you know, I'm give like, I gave up smoking. I am a non-smoker versus saying, I am trying not to smoke. Not that I've ever smoked before, but that was the particular like instance that this book gave. And it was wildly different the people that kind of identified themselves as a non-smoker versus the ones that said I'm trying to give up smoking just Mm -hmm. that little change in verbiage made a huge difference so if you say you know even if you just are starting out and you don't look like a bikini competitor at all but if you say I am a bikini competitor or you know if you say this is my road to pro or you know like if you use that as an identifier it's going to happen because your brain um, is going to, you know, having that in your head is going to propel you to make those decisions that turn you into that person eventually. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So just the next tip is um, turn knowledge into action. So, you know, when we're getting informed on certain behaviors and things like, let's say prep is a new thing and people are, you know, trying to be a little bit more healthy, but they're struggling doing it consistently. So I think it's important to try to think about instead of like just gathering knowledge about certain things, like putting them into action and making sure that you're 
like making an appointment. Um, I don't, I guess I'm not explaining this very well. Do you care to kind of elaborate on that one? Yeah, I think there was a, um, there was a quote on here and I'm not seeing it in the notes, but I read it in the article that we took this from and it, and it had to do with um, a lot of people know a lot of things about nutrition, but they're still mm -hmm. overweight or they're still not where they're, where they need to be. And so a lot of it is just simply breaking down how, like wh how, what, you know, in your head, how can you transform that into behaviors? Mm -hmm. How can you transform? Like, I know that I should eat more of these. How am I going to do that on a daily basis this week? I mm -hmm. know I should, you know, drink more water. This is how much I need to be drinking. How am I going to do that this week? Like, how am I going to implement what I know into what I can actually do? I know I need to get this much protein. That's a huge thing with bodybuilding. We mm -hmm. need to get our protein. What are, Google it. What are high protein, low fat, low carb foods? Like, what are those? Figure out what you can buy, what you can make, how you can proportion it out. Like, lay it out what you know in your head instead of just having these vague ideas of, I know I should eat healthier what does that actually mean? Look like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like I should be drinking more water. Well, are you measuring it? Are you drinking out of a straw? Like what are some ways that it can, you know, if you don't really like drinking plain water, like what are some ways that you can get like fluids down and get close to, you know, an ounce per pound of body weight? So yeah, I think that's great. Um, okay. That, you wanna take that the next leads, one? Yeah, it leads great into this one, which I think is number six, uh, is keeping it simple. Keep it simple. A huge part of health and fitness and bodybuilding as a whole are all of these little fancy supplements or tips and tricks or all these little things and really lay the foundation first of keeping it simple. Do the simple, basic things. Do them well. Do them every day for weeks and months. And then once you have those down, you can kind of play around with, you know, what supplements should I add and what, you know, little techniques with different manipulations can I do? But really, honestly, we can make a huge progress with just bringing things down to simple steps. What am I going to eat this week? How am I going to hit my protein? How am I going to stay within my calories? How am I going to drink my water? And how am I going to get to the gym? Absolutely. Super simple. Yeah. Um, I'm going to skip one that, um, the one right before that. So when things look bleak reframe. So I think this is really important, especially when, um, like a competitor receives maybe a placement that they were upset about or something like that. And I think that it's, it's important, especially if someone's discouraged by like what the judge's feedback was just offering alternative perspectives, um, in terms of, uh, one of the things that I did um, like recently when I was kind of reflecting on like, you know, what was this athlete's strengths? What are some things that we can improve? And then what's like the strategy to move forward? And I think that if you get those tangible things, then you can kind of uh, rewrite the script and highlight the opportunities for learning and focusing on those ways that, you know, like with these strengths that you have. And with these parts that we can sort of like have opportunities for growth and, you know, things that we can fix and move forward. I think it's important to highlight those things, but also being really objective and real with that reality. Like, okay, like, you know, we didn't really like what the judge said. Um, we didn't really like our placing. These are the things we're doing right right now. These are the things that maybe could use some work. Here's some tangible action steps that are very simple to kind of correct that. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I see on that one. So I think yeah. now we're back to know what to control. So are you ready yeah, for that sorry. one? Okay. I missed, I totally missed that one. No, that's okay. But just one more point on that, that I love about, um, I think we've already talked about this a little bit, but um, in our sport, like think about it as, I know a lot of us just kind of think about it as a bucket list item, even when we're in the sport, like, I just want to go pro or I just want to, you know, take, I just want to get that national qualification. I just want to go pro. 
there's not an end. Like we can retire from the sport and that is totally fine. But once you get that pro card status, it's not like you've arrived. Then you're going to have even more goals, bigger goals, Mm -hmm. harder preps. Then you want to win a pro show. You want to get that Olympia qualification. Then you're going to the Olympia. You're getting like, it's a huge long journey. And if you're a part of the sport, you know, like I'm wearing, I don't know if you're watching on YouTube, but I'm like, I'm wearing the Chiefs today and go KC Chiefs but like we've already won two Super Bowls back to back they're not done like they are working for that next one they're trying to win every game they're always trying to get better but I think in a way that's kind of freeing because it it lets us enjoy the journey and when you get that feedback you just implement it into your next season because it's not you're not pushing for this end goal it's an ongoing sport so I think that kind of takes the pressure off a little bit too and okay. then the that next- was number eight. So oh, I know okay. you're on a time crunch. I don't know if you have time for seven more or if yeah, you want to uh, do a part two. Do, um, one more. Okay, sure. Okay. So the next one is, I think it is know what to control. Is mm-hmm. that our next one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is a big one. A lot of people get stressed out, distressed about having a lack of control that can cause you to have a lot of overwhelm and you're trying to control things that you can't control. I think that throws us back to behaviors versus results. Sometimes we can't control the results, but we can use consistent behaviors to figure out what we need to change to get those results. So figure out what you can control. Sometimes you can't control what your body weight does, especially as bikini competitors, once a month, our body weight might do things we can't control <laughs> because yep. we have a cycle or maybe even twice a month or, you know, all over the place with digestion and stress and sleep and all those things. We can't always control the scale, but what can we control? Figure out what you can control, control those things. Yeah. And I think this starts with prioritizing and, um, I just started re, um, picking up the habit of the journal that I had been doing mm-hmm. and it's mind, body, and, um, I'm sorry, mind, body and vision. And it's got, you just have to, every day you have to talk about like, what are my three top priorities? You know, what are some obstacles that might come up throughout the day? What am I looking forward to tomorrow? And it gets you constantly thinking about like, okay, what are the, like the major things that I have to get done? And I was thinking, you know, even when like career, um, you know, like your family, your friends, like your body, your nutrition, your workouts, all those things, you know, there's certain phases of the journey that some things need to be prioritized more than others. Like right now you're in prep. So, uh, you know, yes, career is important because, you know, like, you know, need a job and have that, but you also need to also like fit in your workouts and your cardio and kind of get the, the puzzle pieces fit so that everything works out time-wise. We were just talking about this with Friday. That's what kind of like made me think of this. And, um, I actually canceled like a eye doctor appointment for Friday, just because I was like, you know what, I'm not going to be able to make it to Omaha and like get packed you know, get my cardio in and like my workout and all that stuff. So, and my clients are important, you know, my workout, all this stuff is important. And the eye doctor, I mean, I have enough contacts. I can do it another time, but like, you know what I'm saying? I think that it's really good to kind of think about where are the things that are or like, what's that like big thing that you have to get done today to kind of like propel you forward what's your most important like three priorities and i and it the journal actually forces you to say like what time you're doing it where you're doing it exactly what you're doing and i think that verbiage just is a really good reflection and it even has you like project for the whole week and to me like that's part of the whole like key to success with prepping in my opinion and living out the prep life is just like always thinking about where the dimmer switch is going like is it on your career your education your family like does it need to be higher for prep and just getting those priorities set and I think that makes things less overwhelming but absolutely yes I I definitely think especially as you get closer to a show to to know what where your priorities are Mm -hmm. in prep and where you can cut 
little things. I know my family will understand if I need to go into a black hole and yeah. just focus on, I can't see them as much because weekends are my time to sleep. Yeah. I can't, you know? And so even when we were talking about Friday, I was able uh -huh. to go back and think, I have a rest day, you know, that I can play around with that I can double up on my cardio. And so if I don't have time to do my cardio on Friday, I can double up on my rest day. And that's fine because it's steady state cardio and, and just kind of manipulating your time yep. and having friends and family that understand that is super important. And then being able to um, prioritize those things, maybe in your off season, when you have a little bit more time and things like that, definitely. Yeah. Good yeah. And I mean, sleep's a factor too. Cause I, I did the same thing when we were kind of like talking about our schedule for Friday, I um, messaged my workout partner. I was like, let's actually push our workout to nine because I wanted to like sleep a little bit. Cause I knew just with show day, it's like, you're in a hotel and like, you're anxious about your clients or at least I am like when I'm coaching and it's like, I have sometimes a hard time getting to sleep. And then like, you're kind of waking up early, like to make sure that they're all ready. So yeah, I think those things are really good. And I think this is a good stopping point. I know you have to get to your appointment here in a couple of minutes. So I appreciate your time, Lee. And um, hopefully you all got some good nuggets from this. We'll do a part two then. Um, I believe we have a guest, a very special guest next week. So it might be part two. I don't know when we're going to do it, but, um, but yeah, we have like a pretty famous master's IFBB pro that's coming on. So that'll be exciting. Very exciting. All right. If you want to tag us on your story, if you like today's episode, please, um, feel free to do so. You can find us on Instagram at prep life podcast or at glam girl bikini. And if you would like to apply for coaching with Lee Marie or I, you can go to glam and hit the get started button. Thanks for listening guys.